Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this, my second channel, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with all the Flat Earth Debate Uncut After Show and Pre Show goodness. So, we are joined by a multitude of people on the panel as we've just finished off the first live show and while i set up for the second i'll leave you in their good company also be sure to hit the super chat as there is one while this show premieres the good uh you unicorns are awesome no but they're really pushing unicorns like even for adult stuff like a, a, like onesie pajamas for i mean it's it's what what is with this unicorn stuff and unicorn yeah, doesn't cool. want to have a horse with a penis on his head <sighs> <laughs> Sorry, just have to say I know, but no, there's something to it, and there's a lot of sim, sim there's a lot of uh, occult symbolism and unicorns. But it's like yeah. you go go to a, I don't know if it's same over in Europe and the UK, but just unicorn crap on everything. Well, I think oh, we, that unicorns in the spiritual dimensions are real entities. Absolutely. Uh, okay. <laughs> Not physical creatures, though. I suppose I don't know. I just. I just wonder. I see. I see a deluge of 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 a messaging. Well, it's a Once I start talking, there I drop. are all kinds of spirits out there, and unicorns are forest spirits, just like uh, like ball of light, that kind of phenomenon. As I was saying, really quick conspiracy cast because he assigned Nathan as a as a unicorn stuff animal in the shelf. Boom. Oh, I think in the garage. He doesn't he? In the garage, eating magic carrots. Yeah. So how would if you're never gonna see a unicorn, even if you're gonna take mushrooms, because they are anti-human civilization. You can only find them in the most old, remote forest where nobody ever comes. That's where you might potentially see a unicorn if you're really lucky. Or in my garage, some kind of magic carrots. There's one in my garage, are we? Yeah, that's that's the one you might have made. It's not going to be in. You know, unicorn name is, got, it's got you a name. can't capture them. They're spirits. <laughs> well, do you know I've got I've got a name for Maybe it? Maybe you so got to. Can we not, like can we not call it unicorn? Uh, it, it it does actually understand English and takes offence to that. It's got a name. Do you want to know what its name is? <laughs> do you know what its name is? <laughs> what? Gravity. <laughs> Very funny. Gravity the unicorn. Sorry. Sorry, I'm here hypnotized looking at Rosan. Boom. I like talking about this hero stuff too. I did so hey, well. Hey, Jose. First hey. hey Rox. Sorry, did I miss uh, something? I just had if something. we were to be able to get into oh, schools, good. how would we approach it would we come in just ah the earth is flat not a ball it's stupid or would we i think that's a question we should start asking like what how where would you start like what would be the foundation of it just flat earth mm, the now the the problem is especially for young sorry roxanne you want to answer that or me. I'm talking because I'm dominating and don't want to step live in three stage, minutes. But, three minutes. Right. <clears throat> what I was thinking, uh, we really need to learn more about the world before we can bring an alternative because little kids, they kind of need models. It helps them to conceptualize something really big. If we don't have that, then yeah they're not gonna really a lot of people are not gonna latch on or they become very curious especially if their parents are flat earthers that'll work out fine but if they're not if they have no basis to to get a grasp on it especially if there's no model it's oh yeah we don't know we don't know they're gonna walk away so we really need more info we really need the total knowledge of the landmass surfaces and we kind of need to know what's up there 
I'll tell you and what, if though. there's a dome. How about... And how then about, we can uh, present a real serious alternative. Well, I sort of disagree. I would say, look, there's only they only have a certain amount of days over a certain amount of years of this public school, right? Um, you know, basic maths, natural sciences, the alphabet, phonetics, grammar, language. Um, but what they've gotten rid of in, in the U.S. is uh, life skills. They've gotten rid of like home ec and wood, woodworking. And I, I think, mm. personally, I just think that the, the heliocentric model needs to be taken out of school because it's a religion. I agree. Sorry. That, I agree. that could be, yeah, that could but be. But I think I, I also Leave think it to the parents. I also think that the, the phrase, you know, like flat earth is a loaded term. The heliocentric yes. model is also a loaded term. I think we're better off calling it the Copernican model because then we can pin it just to one bloke rather than the whole of science. Because if you attack the whole of science, they're not going to like it, are they? Yeah, I think we should push for them to to concede that it is a theory, and if if they're gonna, so if they're gonna still have it in school, then they have to, they have to make it clear that this is theoretical. End of story. No, but even I, little kids are going to have a problem grasping that at that age. Then well, they're okay, good. Then again, right when you're in grade one, grade two, grade three, why are you teaching like sun stuff? These these kids are, are struggling with you know getting the alphabet down. They, they, they should be teaching like young. I, I I don't know why they overbear the children at that age from yes. from because from of the conditioning. Because of the conditioning. Old, they don't need to have that level of indoctrination, you know, that they have. By now the they have this uh, transgender stuff piled in, the dinosaurs transgender and. This spinning ball. How about starting to treat the subject around eleven or twelve? Well, yeah. I think I think the law is actually pretty balanced in England because it says that when you have a partisan a partisan political position, right, the schools can't teach it, right? They can't promote it. They can teach it, but they can't promote it. In other words, they've got to give a balanced presentation of opposing views. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and there's also a PayPal link in the info box below this video. Most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined by Roxanne, Sleeping Warrior, Jose, Physics Warrior, yeah. Flat Earth Vegan Goy, Eric, Chocolate Saiyan and Arwin. Good to have you all. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, Yam. Hello. Boom. So after this show ends, the uh, second channel that I run, which is just called Nathan Oakley, as opposed to Nathan Oakley 1980, will run the pre-show and the little in-between bit between these two live shows. And that will go out as a premiere on my second channel. So that will start as soon as this show finishes. So be sure to subscribe. There's a link in the info box. And towards the end, I'll make sure you get a link to that so you can chat or continue to chat over on that channel once this show finishes. Um, in that little in-between bit, you'll hear Anthony talking about uh, Arwen coming up with hypothesis and saying that we we've, we can't attack these points for various reasons because they'll get annoyed if we attack science and i don't know we talk about reification fallacies but science isn't going to get annoyed if anybody attacks it anthony and i'm gonna i'm gonna drum this into you and arwin's not coming up with a hypothesis for anything <laughs> 
Well, the thing is, I think if you attack the the heliocentric model, it's a loaded phrase, as is like flat earther is a loaded phrase. So if you're going to attack flat earther or you're going to label something as a flat earther, it's loaded. And if you're going to challenge that the heliocentric model is not true, I think what we're better off doing is describe it as the as describing it as the Copernican model, because that way we can pin it on one bloke rather than the whole body of science. Because obviously people like the Rumpus are going to get upset when you say the whole body of science by denoting it that it's the heliocentric model. But you're right, the heliocentric model is a reification fallacy because it is based on or it's treated as though it's true. It's not. I mean, there's loads of things that's wrong with it. So the bottom line is that um, I think the, the next 12 months is going to be really interesting because, I mean, I think, like I say, the activism is going to step up a couple of notches and I've got some really cool irons in the fire at the minute and I'm hoping that I can uh, use the sway of being in academia to influence some people in positions of authority to give me some time. And if we, if we can do something productive and, and constructive, I think we'll get this law implemented um, and I'm hoping that it's going to go exceptionally well so i'm looking forward to the next 12 months one guy speaking the of the rumpus i guess he's not out here ronnie and rumpus might must have the day off today but one guy in the chat says you need segregating <laughs> thanks a bunch and so at the beginning of the show let's go back to it Oh, I've lost my thingy window. There it is. So Roxanne was on 1589 subs at the beginning, and now she's on 1615, is it? Let's have a look. Update that. So it's 89 to 89, 99,009. So she's got 25 subs. So that means I think there's 25 people that didn't even know that she existed until like, or didn't, wasn't aware. Hello. I think we lost something temporarily. Right. It's frozen. Should we look at his face? He's frozen. Oh, no, it won't Ooh. show. Damn. I can bring that one, up. One oh, thing I think maybe Riley might be missing is going after this religion. It is also going after government. The science and government is very... Uh, yeesh. I don't know. Well, they're in the school. They're the, they're on the school board. And you got to be careful because my friend in, in Canada, she met. You know, the school board uh, is uh, they're they're quite the controllers. Hey, well, we're waiting for him to come back. Rox, oh, Roxanne's leaving. I was going to ask her what happened to Mark Sargent because we didn't really. Uh, I haven't really even heard the story. Poncho Pete's got the backstage uh, interview with Mark Sargent and Zulu One. Um, you may want to go to this channel and give you a link on that one. But yeah, although, be... yeah, he he was he left early, so somebody's going to be um presenting the awards, presumably today. It's has to do with a celebrity, I believe, that's considered as an A-list and wound up to be um, a troll for YouTube. So it's kind of somewhat bad and good with this uh, with this conference. But that's the backstory and what's happening. Well, I mean, if you got if you're strong, it would seem like uh, it would be an opportunity to, to uh, confront a troll. But that's just sure. me. So, are you going to put that in the side chat so I can go look at it? I appreciate sure. that. Uh, I'll do it. They'll probably say Metatron versus Decepticon. Yeah. Yeah. You like uh, you know, I got my troll Ronnie. I've had him on my show. You know, it's I. I mean, how else are you going to put out your point unless you you let someone actually expose who they are? Well, correct. So it's about really their actions. That's not what they really they say. Yeah, but but anyway, I hate to go off on a tangent. Riley, are you still there? I think he's dropped. I think maybe his computer froze. Okay, he, he dropped. I think the dog must have eaten the cord or something. I'm kind of curious as far as his opening presentation and how he's going to present um, his claims. Whether if not, he can say he actually he's having a hard time proving he lives on a ball where. The, actually, the burden of proof is upon him to show the evidence, rather than having you know the body politic showing the the glitches, and for them to show the burden of proof. So that's what I want to discuss with Riley and how he's going to pitch it his first beginning for his presentation. Sure, I could give you an angle on that. I mean, his angle is that they are teaching this, 
So it is them that are making the assertion whilst talking to children. So his angle is that you're not supposed to teach partisan politics. You're supposed to give an even-sided approach to these things. And in the terms of heliocentricity, it's asserted as fact to children. So that's the angle he's going at. So in terms of him making any claims, well, no, he's challenging the claims that are being taught to children. But can you just pick it up from there where he, as if he was taught as the child and being lied to, or just like Santa Claus, or as if I'm here, you know, Anthony Brown, I'm trying to prove that I live in this ball, and yet I'm coming up with, with all these um, equations and, and stuff that doesn't make sense. Um, I think that would be a better or easier debate for uh -huh. Riley than rather than shifting it and, and still, again, having the, the, the other panel of body politics to defend or actually prove that uh, the existence of these uh, concepts exist and to be accepted to be true. I think it makes no odds if they're taught as true. But anyway, anyways, I do think that Riley is doing a really good thing on that side where you guys are at. But where I'm at in America, um, we're not obligated to tell the truth at all. So there's somewhat of a um, schism here, and we haven't yet to, uh, we haven't yet done the research like Riley did with, with the with the with the academia. So we are looking for people out here on this side of the states that can do the same thing as what Riley's doing and make that presentment. So it seems like Riley's going to be the first guinea pig to make this presentment, and we'll see how it works. Sure, but you know he's he is. He's looking for his angle. It's not like he's just found a law that says you must teach children the truth. It's the same. The first thing he first brick wall he encountered was exactly that. There is no, you know, there's no document or anything that says you've got to you've got to be right or truthful. But there is an angle in terms of partisan politics, which is the angle he's he's found. He said he wouldn't take long to find his angle, and he was right. You know, he showed it me for the first time maybe a week ago, and I was like, wow, cool angle. You know, they are That's teaching fine. this as fact and ultimately speaking it's a political view so why isn't it giving the opposite side to this political view in terms of our world outlook in terms of global warming in terms of you know any speech that's come from Barack Obama where he says we haven't got time to discuss the other view it's like really? Oh, okay well according uh -huh. to the British education system you're not allowed to do that you must present both sides of the argument. We don't have time for a meeting with the Flat Earth Society. Exactly. Oh, really? Well, thanks for making it a political issue, Mr. Obama. A little segue, a little uh, different subject. Uh, uh, reading some of the comments in the chat, the bowlers don't have any argument because what they attack is personalities. They say, Mark Sargent's is control opposition, just like Steer, Oakley, Roxanne, Joe, Joe uh, Globe, John Smith. So what does that have, have anything to do with Earth, Flat Earth, or Round Earth, or whatever? Yeah, exactly. I've never once denied my affiliation with MI5. And yeah, they do pay me, but, you know, I'm being held at gunpoint. So, you know, ultimately... When you're being held at gunpoint and then they say, look, we'll blow your brains out or you have to go and lie to the world about Flat Earth and we'll pay you. Obviously, I'm going to take every penny and lie to the world about Flat Earth because that's exactly how the world works, isn't it? Yeah, OK. That, that's what Pete says. Uh, really? OK, so you're literally going to draw that with a, as a parallel as opposed to the total fast that I put it out as. You're going to say that that is actually true for P Mars. <laughs> no i don't uh, i have my suspicions but i don't have my claims on p mars I, but i have my strong suspicions same thing with ronnie yeah riley is quite dodgy i've always thought it i've never trusted him no it's a guy you probably yeah. haven't seen his name's ronnie oh ronnie oh, i ronnie. mean yeah anthony's perfectly ronnie legit so sorry i take that back retracted retracted But Ronnie and the Rumpus have the day off today. I think they had a lodge meeting that went late last night. 
Is that Ronnie like Jason and Ronnie from the Limitless Channel? No, he's a guy called uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan, aka uh, uh, Seaside, uh, Seaside, whatever, aka Joseph Stalin. He he changes uh, rather than banning him. I just let him talk now because he has so he, he can change uh, emails like within ten seconds and he's back. So there's no banning him. Hi. Yeah, trolls are welcome, you know. Well, he was in the chat yesterday here and on Jamie's chat and, and on uh, Ken's chat, basically calling everybody a Nazi and whatnot. So. Of course, they have no claims for the globe. They have no proof, so they have to attack the persona, you know. Sounds more like he's a social justice warrior. They call everybody Nazis. Yeah, Nazis, racist, everything, you know, basically telling that uh, people need to be taken and put into a cell and have needles put into them. So basically supporting the idea that men with violence should have authority over everybody else with no evidence that they have that authority in the first place. Kind of like taxation. You get taxed only, you're attacked to pay the tax, because if you weren't attacked to pay the tax, you wouldn't pay the tax, now would you? So, does anybody actually know what the dealio between Mark and Logan Paul is then? Yeah, I was waiting for the, uh, I'm going to post a link in the side chat, I'm still waiting for that, I'd love to see what happened here. Uh, I'm still waiting for it, I just sent out the word. Roxanne, you might know more because you were talking to him all last night. Can you go over what happened with uh, Mark Sargent yesterday? Um, so all I'm all I'm aware of is that is it Logan Paul? Name Logan Paul, huh? the guy that filmed that forest where a lot of people had killed themselves, um, and he kind of went viral. So he's got a lot of followers, like millions of followers. Um, and I think that Logan Paul, if I'm right, went there to kind of mock the event. Um, and um, but I think uh, Mark Sargent went on a hangout with Zulu One to talk about it. As far as I'm aware. Well, if you have any links to put in the ch side um, chat, yeah. Let me just let me just try and have a look for that just now. Um, also, Eco Dave Media has got um, a piece of content that I will share in the chat room as well um, that he got from the conference as well of Logan Paul talking to someone else. Um, they were kind of going back and forth and um, there was another young, in fact, it looked like there was a teenager there as well, quite a kid, probably my daughter's age. Um, I'm just going to pop that in. The, just give me a second, guys, and I'll get these links. Hello. Welcome, hey, Alan. Alan got a new guest. Hey, Alan. How you doing? Hello, boys. Great show again. Thank you. Much obliged. I think he just, uh, uh, Alan just posted that link in there. That's good. Thank you, Alan. Thank you so much, Alan. That's great. Hi, nice to meet you. You're welcome, Roxanne. You look like you're uh, on one of those shows where they sell those fake diamonds. You're going to sell more diamonds, right? I'm not selling. I'm not selling any um. Any, no, no cons here. There's just um some info behind me that kind of backs up how we've been lied to. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I don't know if anyone can. My camera is really crap, so I don't know if anyone will able be able to see that. But it's just there's some information there um, regarding how the lie has been perpetuated. Um, and there's a website on there as well at the top that says, uh, well, it's a bit ruffled up there, um, www.fe.starks.co.uk. Um, and I'll send some people there um, to a friend of mine, Jason of the Disbury. You'll have, um, to, you'll have to repeat that website and... name, Roxanne. Sorry to interrupt. Pardon? It sounded it sounded like FE Farts. Can you repeat the oh, website sorry. name? <laughs> fe.start.co.uk. <laughs> F E S T A R T dot co dot yes. UK. Brilliant. Yes. Yes. I think I, think I might buy F E farts dot com. <laughs> <laughs> I also put the link in the back hangout. So if you guys see it, it's under Metatron versus Decepticon. 
Yeah, that's a great title, by the way. I don't know who came up with that. Jibby. That's excellent. My computer just died on me. I suspect what did I miss? Oh, it's been did absolutely dramatic. Somebody died. I know what. I know what I missed. I missed Alan B giving some evidence for a, a gas pressure next to a, a without a container next to space, didn't I? Tony, is um, gas pressure and atmospheric pressure the same thing? Gas pressure and atmospheric pressure. Yes. Well, it depends. Do you mean the function or do you mean the substance? Both. No. The same there. thing. Gas pressure as a function is different to gas pressure. Uh, atmospheric pressure is different to gas pressure as a function, but as a substance, they're both identical. So, Such a l- about lovely, that container. Lovely he- red herring. That was beautiful. Did you enjoy that, Nathan? It was, it nice was, response. It was wonderful. Right? Doesn't give us any cl- any closure okay, on that, that space. Did you hear that? Oh, <laughs> yes, you with me? Ooh. Doesn't, Things doesn't have really, changed, uh, Tony. Doesn't get changed. us closer to believing in space, though. <laughs> so, uh, about that container, Al. What about it? Where's the container that has the uh, the gas pressure in it that we breathe? Oh, can we not do this in the after show so Nathan can get an excellent clip of you lot shouting at me? No, I'm quite happy to do it now. Why? Well, because we had a little off an offer hangout, a little offer tete a tete, and you were asking, can we not just have a normal conversation? And I said, no, we can't. Come we don't on. do normal conversation, Al. Come on, Alan. So you know you can. It's gravity. I'm more interested in why Mark Sargent's gone home. Why? Well, from what I gleam, it's because Logan Paul was there, and I don't know anything about him. I, I, you know, I heard the whispers about the guy when he went to the suicide forest. That's about it. That's all I know about him. What? Um, yes, that was rather distasteful. He did that. Yeah, too. Oh, that guy as well. That's that all I know. He actually showed a dead body. That guy is completely overwhelmed with popularity, and he can't handle it. That mm. guy is crazy. Mm. I mean, I didn't see the video, but I saw the stills with him with a Pikachu hat on. And that in itself, you know, that's disgraceful. How can he wear a Pikachu <laughs> hat? It was, it was um, very rude to Japanese people as well. Their culture is very strong over there. Certain things you shouldn't be doing. Yep. What, did, what did he do? Um, like eating and walking in the street. You know, you, you don't do that in Japan. Eating and walking in the street, you can't do in Japan? No, you don't do that in Japan, Tony, no. For what reason? Um, you, you just don't. It, it's not It's not the done thing. Well, can I, that'd be hard on a Saturday night with a kebab, wouldn't it? It would. You, you, you'd be in dire straits. <laughs> so what do you do? You have to eat it in private dwellings? The, people usually eat outside the convenience store or indoors. Just outside the door, you you oh, will ne- you'll never see a Japanese person walking with a say a hamburger or a kebab or a drink. And what's the reason for that? I know it's a culture thing, but what? Hold on, hold on. We've got a correction. Logan's Paul brother, uh, Logan Paul's brother, did the suicide thing. Not uh, Jake. Not Logan. <clears throat> oh, Jake Paul. This this two of them. Isn't no, I'm even more confused. Me too. I don't think it's relevant. I don't know anything about it. It's not relevant. It doesn't that. matter if we've got the right person. Who cares? <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> I, I just don't know who he is, and I don't know what the beef is. And it's as far as I'm concerned, it's just a story at this point. I'm sure he'll uh, publicly declare it or whatever, and he'll be outcast or whatever. I don't know. But at this point, it's just he's just got a difference of opinion. It seems. I don't know any more than that. And until until we get the in- it's problem, strange. It seems a strange thing to do, though, to um, keep somebody like that. You know, as a secret, when most people presenting would probably not agree with him being there in the first place. Seems pretty weird, Tony. So, if it was kept a secret, that means that either it's a it's an error in judgment on behalf of somebody, or it was intentional. I don't know. Bob did it, didn't he? I don't Bob. know. Bob. Mm-hmm. What do you mean, Bob? You mean Robbie? Bob. 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 Bob Nodell. Skiba. Oh, Rob. Rob Skiba. Oh, Rob. Bob. 
What? Why are you calling me Bob? What, the, no what are we talking about here? We just keep saying Bob. What? <laughs> can you give us a surname? Maybe a hint at who you're talking about. Bob Skiba. That's Rob. Rob, Skiba. Rob with an R. Yeah. You're mixing up Bob Nodal with Rob Skiba, maybe. No. Anybody called Rob is Bob, yes. Yeah, but he doesn't call himself Bob. Uh, Bob, oh, Bob, oh, Bob. That's new that's new to me. Sorry, Rob and Bob are interchangeable. I didn't know that. Yeah, they are. But Rob Skiba doesn't call himself Bob, and everybody calls Bob Nodell Bob. <laughs> hey, I Rob Nodell. Oh, right, this is of course Rob <laughs> Robert. Bob. Yeah, okay. That now makes more sense. It's like, like Will and Bill. Like Will Nathan, and Bill. Nathan, you stick like, with me. Like Dick and Richard. I got yeah. there in the end. Okay, I'm a bit slow today. Sorry, Alan. But you mean like Dick and Richard? So hang on a sec. So let's just go back <laughs> to the story. R Richard the third, commonly known as Dick the shit. <laughs> Alan, are you saying that Rob Skeeb is responsible for this guy being there that that Mark Sargent doesn't like, and that's why he left? Um, I think there's a number of things. Uh, the, the first thing would be he doesn't like the um, two brothers and doesn't agree with um, the way they carry themselves and what they do for a living. So that's the first thing. What do they do and for a living? Don't they make YouTube I, videos? Uh, they're awful people, Nathan. But they're they just make, are they YouTubers? Is that what they do for a living? Yes. Well, they're just YouTubers then, right? No, uh, it's the way they carry themselves, the way they exploit the rather young audience and don't set a good example to them. Are you um, saying that they're worse than Nathan now? I wouldn't go that low, Tony. Don't tune in. Don't watch them. Easy. So what was the second point you were going to make? Um, that it was kept um, from the people presenting and they weren't um, told about it. Yeah, I remember that. I remember it was hyped up as a big secret, and not many people actually knew about it. And I thought that was like bravado, you know. Like people obviously did know about it, but maybe they actually didn't. But, yeah, but are you saying that's down to Rob Skiba? Yes. What I'm saying as well, um, a third point would be m most people don't even know who he is. So why would it be of any interest to people interested in FE? I agree. I don't know who he is. Okay. Seems well, I, I I knew who he was, but that doesn't. You know, I think it's a stroke of genius. He stirred a bit of controversy. People I think all, about it's, his event. it's only fair to say at this point, all we know is that one of those Logan, Jake, Paul brothers turns, I'm not sure which one it was now because I'm a bit confused. But I think as, other than that, anything's just speculation. I don't know if we can start insinuating it was anybody's particular fault that the guy was there in the first place. So I don't know if I can agree with saying it's Rob's issue well mark isn't it mark threw him under the bus so there you go oh really well then i stand what's the case well I I think, did i miss something what, what, what happened I, 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 don't know, yeah, I don't know what's going on come on arwin are you not keeping up with the flat earth debate they landed on the moon arwin it's amazing <laughs> and they yeah. found there was gravity there yeah. And Roxanne showed the fourth wall. She's not in a NASA headquarters or a, a freaking MK Ultra office. Yeah, so thank uh, you for showing the camera around the house. You're not in a, in a control YouTube office. Yeah, you got, got to see the fourth wall when I went to go and make my coffee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm broadcasting live from the ice wall, uh, Arwen. Right. <laughs> Um, no, I think with, the, with the none of us being at the event ourselves, I'm not sure that we should, even if people have thrown people under the bus and gone on to interviews, none of us were there in in, in it's person. So I don't know. It's just I drama. Like, this sounds like a lot of gossip. Yeah, it's drama. Mm. Which I don't like being part of, so I'm like... Oh. Yeah, but the people love it. So, stroke of genius as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, I suppose in our language it'd be like inviting Sly Sparkane to be the, the chief speaker or whatever he was promoted as. <laughs> uh, oh, is your dad to name Dick? Yep. Yeah. Richard. Well, yeah, in if he would go to England or America or anywhere like that, he would probably introduce himself as Richard, unless the people already know him but <laughs> yeah it's a normal name in the netherlands so imagine that as your nickname though dick 
Do you remember seeing that scene out of um, that one that, um, oh, I can't remember what his name is. The guy, that, the host of the show was um, uh, out of Coronation Street and he was asking a question and, and the person's name, it was to identify what sport the person played. And the, the person's real name was Fanny Schmeller. And yeah. He was rolling around on the floor laughing. He couldn't pick himself up. It was hilarious just watching him react. <laughs> uh, I can't remember what his name was now. The Cockney guy in uh, Coronation Street. Mike Baldwin? No, the, his son. He was dating Frankie. How about Dick Butkus, Alan? Oh, Have you heard of him somebody before? shoot me. Who said that? Warrior. <sighs> You sound bored, Nathan. No, no, I love talking about Coronation Street. This is just one of my favourite Flat Earth subjects. Best segue ever. I'm just waiting for that angle back into Flat Earth. <laughs> there is none. <laughs> we should have our own Nathan's Flat Earth gossip for, magazine. Nathan's waiting <laughs> for a baller to destroy. If you just if you just research Van Schmeller, you'll see it on YouTube. It's funny as hell. Shall don't we? You, um... Don't you think we should have like our own Flat Earth? Gossip magazine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll kick that off. Shall that we would be hilarious. <laughs> and so it's, it's always yeah, stupid. Go, go ahead, Arwen. It's really funny. <laughs> it really yeah, is. Shall we talk about Jim Panda's last ridiculous? Not well. I haven't watched it. Have you watched it, Nathan? I know it's about you, Nathan. But have you watched it? I didn't know it's about me. I haven't watched it. No, I haven't watched it either. So, Alan, what is there to talk about if we haven't seen it? Are you not going to watch it? He's full of shit. The guy's a liar. Why would hey, I bother? Hold on a second. Hey, Paul J. How are you doing? No sound. No sound. You're not on mute. Your mic is not working. Yeah. yeah you check settings. 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 Check top, the settings. Top of the screen. Cog. Go to your mic. Select the right mic. Anyway, we see good to have you. Moving buttons coming out. And yeah, now you're muted. Oh. <laughs> Oh, he might join again. He might be rejoining. So, Nate, so you guys watch the Children of Flutter documentary by Jim Pende? No, no, that's what we're talking about now. or not talking about. No, we haven't seen it. Have you seen it, Jose? I seen the first like ten, fifteen minutes. It's uh, entertaining. It's it's something you know. It's different. How long is it? Because he normally makes massive videos, and I can't be bothered with them all. I don't think it's too long. Maybe maybe half an hour, forty minutes. Oh right, that's a lot better. Two ten minutes. A sixteen and a ten. So is there any, what, how can you critically acclaim it, Alan? Is it, is it worthy of watching? How would you promote this to us to encourage us to watch it? Well, it's quite interesting if your name's Nathan. For what reason? Mm, there's at least 12 lies that Nathan gets caught out in. <sighs> Hang on, are these lies in the opinion of Gem Panda? Well, if you do the research... So they are lies the same, in the of Gem We're talking about the same Gem Panda. Those landed on the moon. In other words, yes. I think the thing with Jem Panda's perception of lies is if you disagree with him, he calls you a liar. It's literally Wait. that simple. We got sound from Paul J. Yeah, we can hear Paul. You do? Yes. Yeah. Was it okay? Okay. It's the first time in a hangout. Thought I'd liven it up a little bit. Good. Good. Okay. Um, so, my background. Uh, I am an ex-geodetic surveyor. X. So I'd like are you to break X. Are you, are you, when you say am X. I still breaking up? No, no, you're good. Are you retired or? Okay. Did you... uh, I changed. I'm. Uh, I'm actually in my fifties. I'm in a completely different industry. I. Uh, I was. Uh, first, I have a bachelor of applied science in surveying. Did it in Australia. I now live in Texas. Uh, I left surveying mainly because of uh, climate. Uh, put it this way, I like being comfortable and when you are surveying out in the field, it's either too hot, too cold, too wet, too windy, too snowy, too dusty, and it's lonely. You don't get to meet a lot of people uh, other than your survey support team. And uh, there's some funny stories about that uh, in the old days. So anyway, getting back to it, my surveying background uh, is based in the 1980s, okay, as GPS was just coming in. So I have experience in GPS, but the, uh, the bulk of what I would be happy to talk about would be pre-GPS, which is all the optics and the manual measurement methods 
and uh, I guess Anthony's discussion with Miles uh, about a day and a half ago prompted me to come on. Cool. So wow. what can you tell us? Sorry, I missed that. What can you tell us? Well, what do you want to start with? Is geodetic survey actually empirical or is it based purely in maths and it's like pseudoscience? No, it's empirical. How can you... How, how in do other you... words... Mm -hmm. Well, let's start with one in particular. Can we do a uh, desktop share? Yeah, you've got a bottom, top, top left-hand corner. You've got a, a green, green uh, screen button. With a, an arrow pointed. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank you. I'm a little bit uh, slow on Hangouts. Don't yeah, worry about it. Let's do entire screen. So you should be... Let's talk about this one. Can we see a, uh, a diagram there now? We certainly can. Uh, just out of interest, is the uh, red lines, green lines, and blue lines visible to most people, yes. or is it too fine? Well, I'm colorblind, so you'll have to bear with me, so is Nathan. <laughs> That's fine. So there is an assumption here, and it's the only assumption that is involved with what I'm going to just, uh, talk about. Okay. And I'd like the agreement from the panel to see whether this assumption is worthwhile or uh, whatever the word is. And that assumption is, and I've got a picture in the top left there, which is a plumb bob. So does the panel agree that a plumb bob per points perfectly down in the vast majority of situations? I'm not talking about whether it's caused by gravity or buoyancy and density, mm -hmm. just whether the plumb bob does point perfectly down. Yeah, well, it is perfectly or... stationary, yes. yes. Sorry, down. What do you mean down? Down's a relative term. Yeah, uh, sure, Nathan. Take the normal approach, which is there's perfectly up and perfectly down. Uh, I'm talking about leveling here. Uh, so should we say vertical? So let's use the word vertical. Sure. But I'm just getting to the point that it is perfectly vertical at your current location. So, yeah. well, let's just see if that assertion or presumption extends a little further. So we've got your plumb bob. And it's dangled, mm -hmm. let's say, at the North Pole. Yeah? And then you've got the same plumb bob, and it's dangled at the equator. Are they both pointing down? For each person they are. So, relative to each other, are they both pointing in the same direction? If the Earth is a globe, no. Oh, not so in the same so we are. If, I so if. we're assuming the Earth is a globe, then. No, no, he's no not. I'm not. Yeah. Not yet. He's not. Well, let, let's no, let's hold on. on. I don't know what the what's the plumb bob yeah. for then. It's to give you a perpendicular. It's something we're going to come back to exactly. It is to do with leveling. Okay, so on this particular page, let me zoom it in a little bit. Have people like George, uh, not George, uh, Chris Bamatra oh, and some yeah. others, I can never pronounce his name properly, I'm Jesse sorry. Jesse Kozlowski. Chris. Yeah, yeah. So, Chris has been using certain levels in the past. Uh, I'd be happy to have a chat about some shortcomings with what Chris was talking about the other, over the last week or so. But in this example, these are particular geodetic levels, okay? There's two examples here is a Carl Zeiss NI2 and a Wild N3. The reading accuracy of a somewhat trained observer, you just got to get your eyes used to it, means that you can read to 0 0.02 of a millimeter. Okay. Is there any dispute at this stage about manufacturers' uh, specifications on this sort of equipment? Nope. Sorry, zero, zero point 0.2 millimeter it? over what distance? That's a really good question, okay? Let me explain on that one. Can I stands? skip that question for a second and just no. understand something here from Over me. what distance? Uh, Why would you... Th Nathan, Presumably, so you're, t you're telling me that if I look at something over a metre and then look over a 10-mile expanse, it's going to be the same? Of course not. No. Right. Of course, I so, didn't say that. So that accuracy, so, unless it's relative to a distance... Is meaningless, isn't it? Is that I'm an angular, it, if is let me. An angular uh, size uh, indication? Hang on, let, let's be nice to the guest. I want to hear where he's going, but you understand that this is the point that I was making uh, with Miles the other day, right? 
Is yes, it? I do. Let's know right. exactly yes. what the point is. So give me a chance. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I Thanks. agree. All right. A typical geodetic survey using this style of equipment is a situation where you have in the diagram there point A and point B. You put the level between the two exactly halfway. The normal distance on older equipment is 50 feet from A to B. Okay, so the Can I just ask a question? I'm sorry. Sorry feet. to interrupt. Sorry. I'm really sorry. So mm. what are we looking through to see this view? What piece of equipment gives us this view? So, sorry, back, back, back out again, sorry. So that... You want me to go back out? Yeah, zoom back out so I can see what, what we're looking at. So that piece of equipment gives us this side-on view, does it? Well, I imagine that the, the, that box in the middle right now is the side of so, Sorry, this. Sorry, I heard you say the word so imagine. Sorry, shall I repeat my question? What piece of equipment Please. gives us... Zoom back out again and show us your diagram. What piece of equipment gives us this view? This oh, is not giving us a view here, Nathan. This is showing that. So this is the piece of equipment. If my eye was, if I was looking at something, my eye would be roughly, I'm mean, going to draw it badly here. That's my head. It's an odd um, Sorry, sorry. Do I need to ask my question again? It's a very simple question. You've got a diagram on screen showing us stuff that we should be seeing and looking at and paying attention to what happens in this view that you're showing us. Are we getting this view from one of these pieces of equipment? No. Why are you showing us this view? Because you asked some questions and I'm going to explain something particularly related to what Anthony was saying. I, 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 don't, I still don't understand. You've shown us some equipment, then now you're telling us about something that we're observing, but we're not looking at the view that the equipment gives us. We're looking at a side profile of an observation taking place that no one's actually going to observe at any stage through a camera or anything else, correct? Got to love the orthographic view. Yeah. Just let him answer. Nathan, can you give me 30 seconds to say something? To well, I'm asking you a question. I asked my first question was what piece of equipment gives us this view and you showed us that piece of equipment. Now I've got clarity and it seems no piece of equipment gives us this view. We'll never be establishing this view. This view is never considered and you're not going to have a piece of equipment taking this view, correct? Nathan, I'm trying to explain how it works. Well, I'm just asking. Okay, I'll ask again for a fourth time. What piece of equipment gives us this view? Oh, AutoCAD. Oh, so just computer rendering then. Nothing to do with these pieces of equipment you've got drawn next to this view then. Nathan, I can show you pictures from inside the equipment. It's well, I'm trying to figure this. out what your diagram reference is. What does your diagram reference to do with these pieces of equipment? Why have you got this diagram next to them when this diagram means nothing? It's not any of the equipment view whatsoever. I don't understand why we're in this view. It's an assist to his explanation. I'm not asking you, Arwin. Nathan, is to show you how uh, geodetic surveyors achieve accuracies of better than one millimeter over one mile. For so, so over this view. Mm -hmm. But we're not taking anything from this view. Nathan, I want to hear what he's got to say. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Nathan, if, you know what, if you don't want the discussion to happen, I'd love to have another hangout with Anthony because I think he's really on the wrong track with what... With just oh, what my bad. Said. I just I asked you which piece of equipment took this view. You zoomed in on a piece of equipment. Now it turns out this view didn't come from that piece of equipment. My bad. Sorry. That's obviously my fault that you got the wrong answer to my question. That's my fault, is it? My bad. Yeah, sod off with Anthony then. What, because I pointed out when I asked what gave us this view, nothing gives us this view. It's nothing to do with the equipment on screen. It's just a view you've drawn on a computer. Okay, thank you for the answer. That's very much obliged. Now I understand. Don't know why you didn't say that the first time when I asked. Let's move on. No problem. My bad. Okay, so I continue. The, right, the difference is Nathan's not keen on begging the question, and I don't mind exploring mm -hmm. it. Um, and that's why he's going there. But my question at this point is, are these um, these are theodolites, right? 
No, no, they're not. Are, are they dumpy levels? Let's call it an extremely accurate version of a dumpy level. Are they? Do they have collimation adjustments in them? Yes, they do. Right. So that's what we're going to be talking about, correct? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay. Right. Uh, this, this is at a very high level to start with, okay, guys? But you need to understand a concept here. Go this for it. The blue line, okay, that blue line and this blue line, okay? If you have a collimation error, now I will say to you, Anthony, that in his discussions about collimation being a let's call it a prismatic error or a lens error, is completely wrong in terms of study. A collimation error is oh, on your crosses. Oh, hang on, that's not true. That's not true. Now, now you let him speak. <laughs> hang on. Chris Van Metre and Samuel Robotham both disagree with that statement. So why are you saying that's true? Uh, that, 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 that That's the opposite way around to what they're saying. Can I just ask, have you watched Chris Van Metre's discussion with Jesse Kozlowski? Oh, Absolutely. So therefore, one of them must be completely wrong. Oh, absolutely. So then my question is, if you're a, a geodetic surveyor, and Jesse Kozlowski is a geodetic surveyor, wouldn't it make common sense for you to have this discussion with um, Chris Van Matre, given that he is a surveyor that we're not? Are we not underskilled in terms of this discussion? Two points to that. One is that Chris has decided not to continue, as far as I know, with any discussions about his claims. He just doesn't think it's worthwhile. And the other is that Anthony, uh, yesterday, roughly, you were out there saying that um, you're siding with Chris and you believe that Jesse is ignorant about collimation. So I'm happy to say, if you don't want it on this show, we can well, move it to Hangout. No, no, well, I, I, I spoke to Chris Van Matre about 10 minutes before the show started, and I can guarantee you that he is absolutely up for this discussion because he understands it. My question is, are we the right people to be discussing this with? What I'm saying is, would you not consider doing a hand? Okay. If you let me get across this concept for one more minute, very quickly, to explain something. So you give me one minute, and then you can decide to shut me down. Okay? Go. Is that a yes? Go. Yeah, yeah, go. Okay. Okay. So let's say that there is an error in the leveling equipment here. By having the level in the middle between the two staffs, or in the US it's called rods, the error is cancelled. Okay? So it doesn't matter what the error is in the equipment, the error is cancelled between on, A and B. Finish. That's the contentious let point. finish. One minute for sake. No, no, I didn't hear what Anthony said, so say it, Anthony. That's the contentious point. That's not You say that that's cancelled out, but that's not what Robotham said in the citation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the citation from Robotham and I want you to tell me why Robotham's wrong. So Nathan, would you mind presenting my screen and we'll go through this? Nathan? I'm trying to get hold of Chris Van Maytree. Just give me a second. He's in the, he's in the convention, isn't he? So while they're waiting, I mean, look it up, Anthony, but can you, are you saying that the error in a telescope for whatever reason is non-linear? In other words, it's worse if you point it in one direction than the other? That's exactly what Robotham says, yes. And he's wrong. And, and I'm not going by theory here, I'm going by practice. Yeah, but in practice he demonstrates how you can show that he's right, and I wonder whether you've done this test to disprove him. Let me find it. Bear with me one. Okay, sure. Uh, right, here we go. It says on screen. Can you see my screen? No, I can't. Oh, hang on. Sorry, I'm in the wrong window. Just click on Stupid me. Yeah. Uh, I just see the normal... Do I need to drop my screen share to do that? You need to go back to the chat hangout window and then click on the thumbprint at the bottom, the little square box of me. It might be actually because I'm screen sharing. Let me turn my camera off. It might be something to do with playing the camera. No. Right, okay, so... All right, so... Sleeping. Which one are you doing? This one, yeah. 
it's just a screen full of blue text. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. All right, so I'll read from Robotham's um, paper. Um, and I listen, I, I'm not claiming. All I'm telling you is what it says in here. It says, these comparative experiments cannot fail to satisfy any unbiased observer that in every leveling instrument, that would include yours, where lenses are employed, there is of necessity more or less divergence of the line of sight from true axis. And that, however small the amount, perhaps inappreciable, over short lengths of observation, it is considerable in Hello, distance. Nathan. In Hello, miles. Chris. Um, we're currently doing a hangout, so you are live, just to warn you. Have you got five minutes spare? I know you're about to go into the conference starting. Feel free to say no if you haven't or you don't want to be live on air. Hey, Robert, okay. Robert, okay. I think so. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's fair to bring Chris in at this point because he's clearly in the conference hall, isn't he? No, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, I think he was okay. It's almost. Uh, Is that and it's okay or it's not okay? No. Yeah, drop it. It's not going to work. No, fair enough. It was worth no, a try. I mean, it, it would have if it, if it would have worked, it would have been great. But let let me continue, and then you can tell me where Robotham's wrong. He says. Um, where lenses are employed, there is a necessity more or less divergence of the line of sight from true or normal. And that, however small the amount, perhaps inappreciable over short lengths of observation, it is considerable in distances of several miles, in this case, 50 miles or 50 kilometers, 30 miles for the bridge or whatever. Every scientific surveyor of experience is fully aware of this, apart from um, Jesse Kozlowski and perhaps yourself, maybe, depends on what you say next and other peculiarities in all such instruments and is always ready to make allowances for them in an important survey. As a still further proof of this behavior of the telescope leveling instruments, the following simple experiment may be tried. Select a piece of ground, a terrace, promenade, line of railway or embankments, which shall be perfectly horizontal for say 500 yards. Let a signal staff five feet high be erected at one end and a theodolite or spirit level fixed and carefully adjusted to exactly the same altitude at the other end. The top of the signal will then be seen a little below the crosshairs, although it has the same actual altitude and stands upon the same horizontal foundation. If the position of the signal staff and the spirit level then be reversed, the same will follow. But that's the opposite of what you've just said, because you said that one can cancel the other out. Nothing that I've said, uh, I'm going to dispute uh, certainly a lot of what he says, but what he says there is perfectly in in line. Can I have my screen back? Hang on. No, not yet. Perfectly in line with what? Okay. If you have a piece of equipment that if you look at something and it diverges away, and it let, I'm just making up numbers here. There's nothing true about this, Okay. If it diverges down an inch over 50 feet, which is extreme, it diverges down an inch everywhere around that piece of equipment at a distance of 50 feet, yeah? Which is what he says. Yeah. So when we go back to my drawing where I put the level directly in the middle of two leveling staffs, the error at each staff is exactly the same. Right. Okay, which means that regardless of the error in the level, the measurement difference, if you want to call it the height difference between A and B, is absolutely accurate. Accurate in what? Not Sorry. Sorry, did you say you the comparative distance? Mm -hmm. Comparing it how? Was it comparing it using that view that you gave us a moment ago? Well, I'm saying if we're measuring from point A to work out the height difference or elevation difference to point B, and you've got a piece of equipment that allows you to do this to point zero 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 two of a meter, right? your measurement will be correct to that accuracy if you do it correctly, if the level equipment is right in the middle of those two points. Right, but you do realize that in actual observations, in 3D observations, there are other effects at play that you can't 
demonstrate with autographic views, right? Like diffraction, for example. Like okay, then can you tell me what the diffraction is over twenty-five feet? Yeah, but diffraction works on any distance depending on the observer height over the surface watching. Hang on. So you said, can you tell me what the diffraction is over 25 feet? Do you agree that there is an element of um, error over 25 feet? Yes, but it is substantially less than 0 0.0002 of a millimeter. Yeah, but the point is when it's over 50, 60, 70 miles or kilometers, that um, that the effect on that is, prom is prominent. Depends what you want to call prominent. So here's the next part. If you do this in, if you do it every 50 feet over a mile, okay? So you've got, what's that? 100 setups, 120 setups or something. The accuracy over a mile for an N2 done correctly, which means including putting up umbrellas to shield the equipment, doing special things with the rods so that they are perfectly vertical, having metal bars banged into the ground six feet down so they do not move, all that good stuff. Your accuracy over a mile, having done it a hundred times, like hundred steps, is better than one millimeter. Fine. So what's the accuracy over 50 kilometers or 30 miles? You need to get into an extra step on this, which is you, you very rarely would run a 50 or 60 mile level run without tying into existing surveys done before. Right, and which, is, have, which is our point, of course, against people like the Rumpus who claim that you can measure the radius of the Earth with a theodolite pointing at the horizon. Well, I haven't got to that part yet. No, I'm preempting you, I agree. Yeah. What's your point, yeah. though? Okay, I just want to explain this is how you would do it over a mile. Okay, can I have my screen back for a minute? Well, so show a different. What, what, let's jump this step. Why can't you demonstrate it over 30 miles? Well, you could. You won't. In one wants to do work. Here's the thing. If you do a mile of geodetic leveling, you are looking at four to five hours for five people or four people. Even with the old equipment, not the new equipment. So here's the thing. The, the, the big thing about surveying is it's not about necessarily learning whether the earth is round or flat. It is about measurement theory and measurement skill yeah. and knowing that every measurement has errors in it. I agree. Okay? The, the errors start from... Let me pull up a thing. But, uh, uh, we, hang on. The point that we're trying to establish here is what level of accuracy is there with the, the diffraction or the refraction that goes through the lens of the theodolite over a great distance. Now, we accept that there's a little bit over a mile and it's like a fraction of an inch or whatever. But the point is that the fact that the light goes through the lens at all creates the bending of light applying Snell's law. Now, it's not that much over a mile, I agree. But we're not talking about a mile with miles, obs miles is observation. We're talking anywhere between 30 and 50 miles. So the question becomes, what is the effect with what we see, the photo that was taken, when light is being bent through the lens as it enters the camera? And Robotham says it's significant over, se over several miles. You say not. I say how so, and you say, well, because you don't agree with Robotham. Here's the thing. So when you set up a mile-long series of levels, okay, so we've got levels every 50 feet. We've got that so far that we know the elevation of each point, this rod on the ground, every 50 feet is accurate to better than one millimetre over the entire mile, yeah? So what? If we then set, yeah, okay, I'd love to show a picture. All right, a diagram, not a picture, because that'll make Ethan angry. If you then set a theodolite at one end of the mile and a target at the other end of the mile, where they are set at exactly the same elevation, yeah? On a flat earth, when you sight through that line, which has not been set by zenith angles or anything, it's purely based on this one millimeter accuracy level run, and then remeasure the points from that line down to each of the 50 foot points, there is actually a two and a half inch rise and fall along that line. Okay, but that's not that's not the same. That's not a, a valid comparison 
because we're not doing that no, with a photograph of a horizon. No, no, but it's about to be because the question is, if you had the distortion that Robotham claims, then the distortion wouldn't be up and down. It would be either up or down. It wouldn't be up and down. I'm sorry I'm being attacked by the dogs. Um, I'm going to just, can you repeat that last line that you said again? Yeah, sure. We've got this leveled section. We've got a theodolite at one end. I don't need a theodolite. It could just be a standard telescope with a crosshair, right? We've got a target at the other end. We're looking from point A to point B, and this is, if it was a flat Earth, this would be a perfectly level sight line. No, it wouldn't. When you measure down, No, it wouldn't. Things yes, drop right. towards the horizon right. with distance. That's why I I'm objected to... Oh, you're going to talk all over me. So, when I objected to your view, if you're going to say things will have a perfectly straight line between them, I will say, no. The thing that you look at in the distance will get smaller and therefore closer to the horizon. So it will drop. No, it doesn't, Nathan. Uh, what, I, I, it, no, sorry, no, hold on. Please. What do you mean, no, it doesn't? So you're saying things don't get closer to the horizon and drop and get smaller as you get further away from them. That doesn't happen. Things maintain their actual size, do they? No. Perspective rules. As you get further away from something, it gets closer to the horizon. So a six-foot man, when he stood right next to you, and you're six foot high, you're eye to eye and exactly the same height, the horizon might be considerably lower than him. But as he backs away from you, he will get closer and closer to that horizon, dropping getting smaller as he gets further away. That's perspective. There's no straight line. What are you talking about? In your oh. diagram there is, but there's no instrument taking a picture of that diagram, is there, as we established? It's That's just conceptual. There's no picture there. It's conceptual to explain what I'm trying to get across to you because I don't have a theodolite in front of me to show you. Here's the thing. Perspective... The vanishing point of the perspective in a telescope is centered on the crosshair axis through straight line through the telescope. It has nothing to do with horizon. Right, but what, you're, what doing, you're looking at. Hang on, what, what you're doing is the same as arguing that, that, well, the curvature is only eight inches every mile. So if you were to put your theodolite over a mile and measure just eight inches and me measure eight inches and me measure eight inches over that whole 30 miles, you're not going to get a lot of curvature. So what you're doing is removing the accumulation of the distance and segmenting it into like chunks that are less, or sorry, more accurate. And that's not what the, what's happening with the camera. When you've got the camera and you're pointing at the horizon, you've got one block of 30, 40, 50 miles and the light is coming, it's being refracted from the lens over that whole distance, but it's not being segmented every couple of hundred feet. So what you're doing is removing the error. So this conversation will continue on the after show, which you can tune in at 0400 hours GMT to catch on my second channel. Once this live stream ends, there'll also be the pre-show. And if you missed the first debate, it'll replay after the pre-show plays out for the first time on my second channel, which is Nathan Oakley. I've just put a link in the chat or there's a link in the info box if you're watching this on the re-upload. And with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a massive thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate. If you hated the show, you know exactly what to do. But if you liked it, maybe consider sharing it with a friend or subscribe if you've not done so already. I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you in the next video or maybe in my second channel's live chat. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Yeah, I can see what you're saying. That light is going to cause a vertical adjustment. And by applying the process that you're talking about, it's actually correcting for that, which is not my point. My point is that it's there in the first place. I have never talked about doing photos. I actually don't believe photos are a very good way of doing anything. Yeah, okay. but that was, that was the conversation that we had with Miles yesterday. 
Well, you can, that's your discussion with him. Um, I'm talking about short distance, as in up to a mile, or we could do two miles, it really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The stream is offline. Oh. I agree, there's not a contentious issue there. Okay, so the issue is, why do we have curvature over a mile of two and a half inches up and down? We don't have curvature. You're seeing the effects of the refraction. You're saying that, well, hang on. So the effects of refraction cause an up and down parabolic curve, whereas refraction is normally in one direction. You're saying the, say that again. You're saying what? You're saying that, I wish I could show you the diagram, but anyway. Um, we have this sight line, okay? Now, in a you, flat you earth... You can, sorry to interrupt, you've said it three times, so you can you can show us the diagram, you just just put it on your screen. So you are screen sharing anyway, whatever you see, we see. Oh, are you? Sorry. I am screen sharing. Yeah, yeah, the show ended about two minutes ago. That's right. Let me pull up this one, which I wouldn't normally pull up. And this has a presupposition. No, it doesn't actually have a presupposition. This tries to explain why we get what we... Sorry. sorry. Why we what do you mean there's no presupposition? You've drawn it on a curved surface. Again, sorry, in no, orthographic no. view. So who's, who's taking this picture? This picture's not a picture that's got anything to do with any of the equipment in this picture. So we're presupposing it's on a curve and we're looking at it from side elevation again. Nathan, one of mean, the first yeah, yeah. questions that you know, might have been from Anthony was, is geodetic surveying based on empirical measurements? Or yeah, you've said there's a straight line. Before. See that straight line that you've drawn? Yeah, that's in side elevation. It excludes perspective, doesn't it? This doesn't take into account what I explained earlier. That things in the distance, your line that you've drawn on this bottom diagram would be considerably smaller to the view of the camera because of its perspective. Whereas you've got it drawn in a side elevation and saying, well, you should have a straight line. Nathan. Why do you keep saying my name rather than acknowledging a damn word I say? Everything I've said to you, I haven't acknowledged a single word I've said this entire show. You haven't acknowledged anything. You just say my name to me like I don't know it. Yeah. Acknowledge what I've said. It's inside elevation, isn't it? This is not a perspective view, is it? Nathan, you're a hundred percent wrong on perspective. Sorry, Flat so out. this is a perspective view, is it? This is the view we get from the camera you've drawn, is it? Nathan, you yeah, you keep saying my name. Stop saying my name and right. answer my question. Is this the view? What piece of equipment gives us this view? What piece of equipment gives us this view? None. Your computer gives us this view because you've taken us away from the actual observation and put it inside elevation. You know what your answer's going to be? My name, right? Nathan. You want to learn anything, Nathan? Sorry, are no, you going to acknowledge worry, a single just... word that I've just said to you? Hang on, or not? Me, I think you need to listen to Nathan's point because his point's valid. What you're doing is removing perspective out of it and replacing it with orthography. That's where we're calling foul. Let me ask him for a fifth time. What piece of equipment, Paul, takes this view when you do this observation? What gives us this view? Take your time. Why do you do something five times? Yeah, I've asked you five times. You haven't answered. I told you. All I get. Say again. This is a conceptual drawing to... Oh, so we've got to conceptualise something, something that you're taking photographs of. Why would we need to conceptualise it? You've got a really good camera there, haven't you? You've got a really good telescope there. Why do we need to conceptualise anything when you've got all this super-duper equipment? It makes no sense. Why would you draw it in this view? Why wouldn't you draw it in the perspective view like the camera gets? Oh, because then it includes perspective, doesn't it? Then you don't have a straight line. That's where you're wrong. Oh, really? So why are we in this view? Because if you go out and measure like this, Nathan, you will see that there is like no what? such Like what? Which piece of equipment's measured this view? Behind. I'll ask you for the sixth time, dickhead. It's starting to piss me off. Which camera gives us this view? If I go out and measure, which camera will give me this view? None! You stupid idiot! 
I agree with Nathan. You don't want to learn anything. You're going to acknowledge what I've said, asshole. I'm going to start getting really aggressive with you, you fucktard. What camera gives us this view, Paul? (laughs) Hello? Fucktard alert. What camera gives us this view, you fucktard? The one that removes perspective from things. Are you one of Rumpus's new buddies or something? Answer me, Paul. Answer me, you disingenuous piece of shit. Answer me now. Which camera gave you this view? I told you, no camera. Right, so why the fuck is it on screen, you disingenuous shit? Because you seem to have problems... So we can conceptualise it, right, fucktard? I don't want to conceptualise it. I know that perspective is a thing. This view removes that thing so that you can say there's a straight line between these two things and it should be at the same height. Well, fucktard, let me tell you this. Perspective is real and you're a globetard zealot that likes to remove perspective for your bullshit geodesy. Hey, Nathan, how did we build the world if this was... Oh, you're going to use my name again? Acknowledge what I've just said, asshole. (laughs) Why are you putting us in this view and removing perspective? (laughs) Hello? Don't ask me a question. I've had enough of your shit. You think you're intelligent, telling us about what the world does, and then you put it in fucktard view. That's this, without perspective included, telling us that there should be a straight line, that this thing in the right-hand side should be at that height. No, dickhead. What about perspective? It gets fucking smaller. Are you stupid? No, you're wrong. Oh, it doesn't get smaller, fucktard. Tell me it doesn't get smaller so I can call you a fucktard again. Tell me it doesn't get smaller. Tell me this stick on the right isn't getting smaller from this point of view. On the left, you stupid idiot. Can I talk now then? You can tell me why we're in this fucking view. You say we'll come back to it later. What you meant was I'll completely ignore this absolutely devastating point, Nathan, and say your name five times rather than address the fact that this excludes perspective, doesn't it? Nathan. Don't say my name. Give me an answer, you stupid moron. This removes perspective. That's why you're in this view. Orthographic, not perspective. Perspective has no change effect on... Yeah, it makes stuff smaller, fucktard. Yes, around the... Yeah, well, in this view, it's not, is it? In this view, it's all the same size. And you've got a straight line, haven't you, dickhead? You see the straight line? That would imply it's all the same fucking size. Well, it's not. When you've got a perspective view, stuff gets smaller. Okay, retard. Why isn't this sinking in? Right, Nathan, let me, let me try. Stop, 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 stop. Let me try doing it in a slightly different tact. Yeah. On the bottom yeah. picture where you've got your Theodolite telescope set up, can you see yeah. that you've got your target is set 3.7655 above the TBM? Sure. That yeah. should be about 0.3333 above TBM because it's much smaller further away. No, that's completely wrong. Oh, so he's literally going to deny perspective. Things don't get smaller into the distance. It's not going to be lower to the ground because it's reduced in size, angular size, when taken into account perspective. No, that doesn't happen. Paul is a perspective denier. He is. Paul, really? Ask, what were you yeah, to yeah. you know what, what, Paul? I'm going to call you a fucktard. Because that's what fucktards do. They ignore perspective. The fact that things get smaller and they say, no, it doesn't happen. Well, that makes you a retard. It does happen, Paul. Got a big fat reality sandwich for you. Choke on it. Perspective's real. Things get smaller into the distance, Paul. Why aren't you accepting this? I agree. I agree. Oh, really? Well, according to this diagram, they don't. Hello? If you agree, why the fuck have you got this diagram up? It says they all remain the same size, you stupid fucktard. Because perspective does not alter the position of a level line uh, sorry in this view it doesn't fucktard but when you look at things that are getting smaller into the distance it would wouldn't it things would drop towards the horizon like we they keep saying Nathan, you're so wrong on that oh and really so things crazy. don't drop and get smaller towards the horizon as you back away from them what kind of fucking retard are you 
They either do you moron. Things get smaller into the distance, you fucking idiot. If I look at a six foot man in the eye, believe me, he's smaller and lower to the horizon as I get further away from him. This is basic stuff that two year olds understand. My kid understands depth perception. Why don't you, you fucking idiot? You're showing the, your ignorance there, Nathan. My because... ignorance about depth perception? Yeah, yeah. things get smaller wrong. into the it's distance, Paul. You've just denied it, then said it's real. So what's the cognitive dissonance? You've got a diagram that doesn't depict that. It shows everything maintaining actual size. Isn't it sinking in? So the dumb people can understand what this is all about. Oh, like now it's the ad hominins. Am I dumb for pointing out that this diagram doesn't take into <laughs> account? Oh, now you're going to rumpus me. Uh, now you're, you're going to insult me, call me dumb. I'm not who? dumb, Paul. You're the fucktard here that thinks that things don't get smaller into the distance, well, when... as shown in this stupid fucktard diagram. The one that I said I didn't like and then you ignored and said you'd come back to. Now we're on it again and you're ignoring it just using my name at nausea rather than addressing the fact that this depiction is bollocks. <laughs> is that your, is that your right. rebuttal? Is that what? Is that your rebuttal? I've said what my rebuttal is. Yeah, and I, I, I counted it. And, listen, I, Paul, I, Paul, Paul, listen, I counted it and said that what you're doing by incrementing it by steps like that, you are correcting for the refraction in the lens, which was my point with Miles. That's fine, but the refraction amount you're talking about is nothing like how uh, Chris or yourself would score it. Or Robotham was describing. It is. Robotham says so. Chris Van Matre says so. Jesse has no idea what he's talking about. I don't know what he's talking about. I'm not an audience. Uh, uh, about, uh, well, I don't think he's so you, Can I say something about Chris? I wish Chris was here, and I'm happy to take on a... Well, actually, no, a give him his money. There's no point, because what's it going to achieve? The point. My point is valid. By doing it incrementally over the total distance, you are correcting for the, the diffraction in the lens. And I think you know that, really, but you're trying to bullshit me. I'm not correcting for diffraction in the lens. There Sorry, is no diffraction refraction. in the lens. Refraction in the lens, refraction. by virtue of Snell's the refraction law. Is, the refraction is not in the lens. Yes, it the is. Yes, yes, it is. What's what's the refraction co uh, the refractive index of a... Uh, it's one, isn't it? And what's the refractive index of glass? It's 1.5. So over a short distance, that 1.5 is not that much. But over 34 miles, that 1.5 compared to one is significant. Anthony, let me ask you a question. What, when does the light change or the, the angle of the light bend in, in accordance to refraction? Is it when it passes through the change in material? It's, it's when it passes, the minute light passes through the lens, I'm sorry, I'm, I need to go and feed the dogs, I'm sorry. I should. Oh, have you been, have you watched this show for a little while? Have you been keeping up to date with the flooded debate? Well, not, not so much the last uh, um, month or two, on and off. Simply because okay. I've been extraordinarily busy, still am. Um, because because you you appear to to know a little bit about how the show works because you're trying to avoid presuppositions and you know trying to throw the the target word trigger words you know. So you 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 know what this show is about, you know? Yeah, I do. I mean, we don't just have to talk about this. I've got other material related to uh, rotation of the Earth and gyro theodolites. That'd be a fun discussion. Um, I'm not an expert in gases, but I would love to have a discussion at some point about the problems that you all have with an open container having pressure. But let's just stick to a topic at a time. Um, Nathan may not want to have me back, and that's fine. That's up to Nathan. Uh, it just it just does the shouty bit at the end to get an extra for the uh, other channel. Does yeah. it ever show? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, uh, usually does it to I'm me. Not, so thanks for coming, Paul. Hey, uh, that's fine. Look, the thing is, and you don't have to believe anything I say. 
I think you probably got a good idea that I actually was a surveyor and I spent three years at university or college, which is now a four year course. It is the equal hardest math course. And I'm trying to show you methods which do not rely on math or other presuppositions, okay? Other than a plumb bob points down. Now, all of the stuff that I'm doing here, and Nathan's going on about these not having perspective on the drawing and stuff. I don't really care about that because out in the field, this is what's measured. And the biggest problem I've got with everything that's been happening the last couple of weeks with Chris and Anthony and others is this claim that level drops with perspective. It does not. Yeah, it does. Perspective vanishing point. Perspective vanishing point is based in your brain. It is where you are looking at as to what defines the vanishing point. It's not the horizon. Right. I mean, put it this way. If you're looking up at a building, there's no horizon. You're looking up. Just you see, see my screen? Perspective. See my screen? See that tree that's in the mid-ground? Um, yeah? If that was okay. further away, it'd be closer to the horizon. Which one are you? A tree. See, yeah, these, okay, the see tree. these posts? See these posts on the right-hand side? See how they get smaller into the distance? I'm really confused trying to get your screen. I'm sorry. Simple. Oh, Look, screen. stuff gets smaller into the distance, and you're what literally thing? denying that. I'm not denying that things get smaller in the distance. Yeah, you are. You're saying yeah. that it should measure yeah, so as a straight line. Things won't drop towards the horizon. It should be a straight line. Oh. You are literally denying yeah. perspective. And every time no, I say it, you, you, you do this. You talk over me like an asshole. This is why I swear oh, and shout at you. Not because I need extra material, because assholes like you don't like me pointing out your crappy perspective view that excludes perspective and the, fact, and the fact that things get smaller and closer to the horizon with distance. That is a fact. That's what things do. Notice how this tree's now closer to the horizon. You notice that? But it was up here. It, it was up here. Now it's down here. That's a shocking revelation of perspective. Wouldn't you agree, Paul? And if it I was right in front hold on, in your nose, hold on, you Jose. Hold on, hold on. That tree was higher up, then I got further away, now it's lower down. But that doesn't happen, does it, Paul? Things don't get closer to the horizon. If that was a theodolite, it should be at the same height. Are you a stupid idiot? I think you are. I think you're a perspective denier. So, if that was a theodolite, that tree, that was higher in the frame compared to the horizon, until it was further... Oh! We're a bit further away still. Amazing. Look, it's got closer to the horizon, Paul. If that was your theodolite, it'd have dropped, wouldn't it? So explain to me why things don't Don't ask drop me a question. I'm making a it's statement different. of fact. The tree got closer to the horizon, didn't it, Paul? I'm struggling to see that. If you oh, well, then you're a fucktard and, and you're blind. You're Everyone an else can see it, fucktard, blind man. Everyone else can see the tree getting retinas. closer to the fucking horizon as it gets further away, as you'd absolutely expect, unless you're a complete spastic, which you are, because you deny this. And literally while it's on screen, happening, and I'm pointing out that the tree's getting closer to the horizon, you're saying, no, this should be a straight line. It won't get closer to the horizon because I'm a geodetic surveyor who puts things into an orthographic view and tells people there's supposed to be a straight line there. No. No. You're just wrong. Oh, I'm just saying the exact opposite. You're wrong, Nathan. Well, what, are you going to deny that that tree got closer to the horizon as we got further away from it? Because that's what happened. I just watched it. Bring it up again for me, please. No, no, no. You, 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 I want you to deny that the tree that's just been on screen... People will see it. You don't have to. I don't care. Because you deny that happens. You say, no, the tree doesn't get closer to the horizon. If it was a theodolite, it would remain exactly the same height. And I say, no, things shrink towards the horizon. And you deny that, right? The horizon, horizon has nothing oh, to do Oh, here we go. There's the tree. Check it out. Now it's on the horizon. Isn't that amazing? You know, all that's changed is distance. It's amazing, isn't it? You can tell me you can't and see it. You can't see the same tree that's got smaller and lower down. You yeah. can't see that, no. Mm -hmm. So you've made a presupposition here that the horizon is actually the... I uh, couldn't give a shit. Line. You're an The tree is what I'm talking You're about. It got smaller and lower. I'm talking about the tree. The tree 
got smaller and lower because it got further away. That's what happens to things. They get smaller and lower as you get further away from them. But you deny that, don't you? Yes. They get smaller, they don't go lower, though. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Funny so when you're standing... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, Paul. Don't oh, grump us the hangout. Good. Just be civil. I don't want to get annoyed with you. If I'm standing next to the Empire State Building, right, I have to look up. If I'm right next to it, right, I literally have to lean my head back to look up at it, yeah? Now, if I'm a mile away from it, do I still have to look up to the top of it? Or has it dropped down, Paul? Boom. Don't sigh, you stupid fucktard. Answer me, you stupid globehead fucktard. Does my neck still creak when I look at that building as I've got further away? Or does it lower down, Paul? The top of the building lower down and the bottom of the building can pull up. Uh, sorry, it so it got lower the, down. Uh, sorry, I thought that didn't. Building. Sorry, Paul, you brushed past that pretty quick. I thought that didn't happen. Top doesn't come down, though, Paul, does it? According to a fucktard religious zealot globehead, that would be you, mate. It does. I don't crick my neck <laughs> anymore when I get further away from that building, which pretty much takes a gigantic shit on your assertion. That it doesn't drop. Right, Paul? No, it doesn't. I said the top comes down and the bottom comes up. Oh, did you? When you have Do we need to edit out your lie? Because that's not what you said. The top doesn't come down, Nathan. It stays the same. I said the tree goes towards the horizon. You say, no, the top of the tree stays the same. You've made an assumption. I'll edit it out for you that. and edit together your lies, shall I? So you're changing your position. Not at all. Oh, so I the top saying, comes down and the bottom comes up. So so the top comes down and the bottom comes up. Is that correct? The top comes down, bottom comes up. So therefore your theodolite's top would come down. Correct? The theodolite, you don't use the top of the telescope or the bottom. You use the answer the is yes, Paul. The answer is yes. It would drop. The top comes down, bottom oh, comes yeah. up according to you. And what you've just agreed with, based on my example of me cricking my neck at a building, backing away from it, and shock horror, the top of it coming down, just like your theodolite would do. It doesn't do it in your orthographic representation, though, does it? Shocking that, that I would object to that type of representation of your observation, because it doesn't include perspective. Things do drop, Paul. So, we're going to get a concession now, or are you going to circle jerk back to the beginning and assert the same shit from the start, Paul? I will assert that the following occurs. The top comes down and the bottom comes up and the level line stays constant. Someone's feeding him in the background. No, I'm not. Adjusted. No, I'm not. Yeah, I, I can hear something as well. First, What's that all about? But then the obstruction starts. Hang on a sec. Someone's feeding him in the background. Did you hear the background conversation? Yeah, I did. Who's feeding That's you, Paul? Not... Told you it was an agent. Someone's feeding you, Paul. Who's feeding you? Oh, wow. Conspiracy theories, huh? Someone is speaking to you. I heard someone talking to you. <laughs> Conspiracy theories. That's right. I heard that, too. Put so your two hats back on. Is, is, is it soundly? Paul, it are you going to deny it? Deny what? Probably Miles or Rumpus. Gents, be quiet. It's soundly, Paul. isn't it? Gents, be quiet a sec. Paul, I want you to deny or confirm that you've got someone in the background feeding you. 100% deny. Pardon? Obviously, you're going to deny. Nathan, make sure this part of the show is recorded because uh, I think we all heard somebody saying the exact same phrases that came out of his mouth a second later. I heard it too, yeah. Uh, it is recorded, of course. Yeah. You're an agent, Paul. You're here to just yeah. call oh, I'm an agent. Crash and burn. I told you. I called it, guys. Oh, no. Trash. Trash. Pathetic human. Consider yourself exposed, Paul. Pure trash. Oh. Let's all go on mute and let Paul explain himself for a second. Good life. All right. Trash. What do I need to explain? What do I need to explain, guys? Where the voice came from in the background, I'm sure we could go back and, re and recover it and play it and listen to it. We could hear him talking okay. to you and he was saying the same words that he was saying. 
I have no idea. It could be an echo in the system. I have I'm no idea. Can I use his voice meter? I'm going to well, call I, you. Uh, I don't care. I'm, we'll play it out tomorrow. That's the show. Your, that's true. Sure. If that's what you're hanging your reputation on, that you believe that I've got someone, um, what did you say it was? Feeding uh, you background. We heard the talking to you. Even Alan will attest to it. Alan, you heard it, didn't you, Alan? So oh, I'm, I'm just amazed how quick he came up with the I knew he wouldn't. stamp of conspiracy theory. That is classic. So that is classic. Man. Right, I've got a recording. I'll send it later. They, they need to update your training manual. That thing's like 2003. Conspiracy tinfoil hat. Jeez, that's that's good. Yeah, to Howard for the super chat while the show's offline. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, Paul say? could have say I'm I'm listening to a YouTube video. I'm watching TV or something, but no, he say no, nothing. Yeah, there was a voice there, bro. And when we go back to listen to it later and we start looking at it, is it going to turn out to be soundly? Well, it's not going to turn out to be anybody. Yeah, it is. We all heard it. <laughs> Jose, you heard it, didn't you? Oh, when you heard it. I heard a lot unclear, yeah. Yeah. I was felt it coming. Background. For a Why first time appearance, this... Here's, no. here's a question. Why would I have someone like Sammy in the background feeding me when I was... You were getting creamed. Because, because I was you have an agenda. Out you said stuff doesn't drop towards... Uh, stuff doesn't drop as it gets further away. And now suddenly you've changed your position to the top comes down, the bottom comes up. So that's a complete change of position. After hearing that phrase said in the background, I heard it and thought, am I hearing things? Did I, is there an echo? Is what I thought. But what, what I noticed, Nathan, was that the, the, the noise I heard that I thought might have been a bit of feedback was then repeated verbatim the way he said it. And exactly. I thought that's he what I heard. I thought, am I hearing an echo? What's going on? Then I hear the same phrase again. It's like, what the hell? Well, yeah, and the it's a reverse echo. echo. I mean, it's I'm a reverse a, echo. I'm at work and it's loud over here and I and I heard it. <laughs> so the answer to your question, Paul, is why would you be getting fed? I suspect it's because you're not actually an odd um, a surveyor in the first place and you need someone holding your hand. I told you before what my experience was, but I can go through it if you like. No, I'd rather see certification proving that you were actually who you were and then proving your identity. And it's not fair to it's not reasonable to ask you for that. But that's my position. I think you're being fed because you're not actually um who you say you are. Would you like to explain uh, would you like me to go into depth just in discussion here and explain not the really. concept We've all heard that somebody's talking Which to you? Way? Ah, that's oh, bullshit. You got, I mean, you, know, you, got, you got papers or yeah. something? You got some type of certificate that you can present? So we can see. Up here a bit of... My wife would know where it is. Well, well, we'll, 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 we'll find out tomorrow. We'll find out tomorrow, Paul. And if, if, it's, if it is the way we say it, we'll be documenting it on the show for everyone to hear that you were basically being fed by somebody in the same way that GeoStreamer was being fed by Soundly. And I suspect it's probably Soundly that's doing it, to be honest with you. It's called a crash and burn. Really? No, I'll be 100%. Yeah, you entered the scene and immediately you got caught. That's a crash and burn. Sorry. Uh, Operation dream failure. Operation. I just want to say one thing, right? <laughs> yeah, one last thing before you. Before well, before you cut me off, I just want to be say that I've been consistent all the way through on this. That perspective does not drop the horizontal line. So when I say that something gets small, not drop the horizontal line, that's not what you said. <laughs> that's not being consistent. Why have you just stated that you've been consistent, then restated your new position? That's a total lie. Because, because. And why would I say anything else that's been in my position all the way Sorry, through? Sorry, that's not you been your position. Me. I've just made that clear. That drop. was not your position. And you've said, I want to restate my position like you've said it all along. And it wasn't your position. Number one, you kept but saying, no, stuff does not drop. No, it doesn't get lower. Yeah, it does. That's correct. That's exactly my position. Right, and your theodolite would drop. Yeah, yeah. yeah, your theodolite in the middle, that would drop with distance. No. Oh, right. Just hand wave dismissal to that then, is it? No, it won't drop. Yeah, I just see this as sad, you know? I just see it as totally pathetic. Yeah. It is, yeah. And can I also say that this isn't even addressing the point that we were talking about? This is a time... <laughs> 
Which one? Uh, sorry, not Nathan. Uh, Anthony. The point Which that we're point? talking about right now is not the point that we should be talking about. The point <laughs> we should be talking about is the accumulated refraction by virtue of the lens because of Snell's law being applied. Oh, that's what we're talking about. So when light enters a lens and then exits a lens, <coughs> does it have the same uh, entry angle and exit angle based on the curvature of the lens? Sorry, speak up a little bit. You were quiet. I'm struggling to hear you because of my background. When light does what? Can you hear me now? Just checking. Uh, yeah, oh. turn you up a little bit. Go on. I, c I can turn myself up if you want. Me to no, it's okay. I'm, I, I've got my game playing in the background because I thought you were buried. But go on, let's see. Let's see what you've got to say. All right. So, light bends when it enters a different medium has a different refractive index. Yeah. It also bends backwards. Yeah. So when it exits the medium. So if you had a non-curved medium, so in other words, a cube of glass, it bends when it enters the glass, and when it exits the glass, the bend is back to normal, yeah? Yeah, but there's a net effect, right? Well, not if it's a straight cube with flat surfaces. It'll push the light to one side, but it, the light will still continue on the same, can we call it a vector? The same vector when it exits. Mm. When you have... Light goes straight through the middle of a telescope. So I'm ignoring barrel errors. Okay, this is straight through the middle. Yeah, but also, you say you on, on that path. Hang on a sec. You say that you're ignoring it, but you actually can't ignore it. It is part of it. You you don't get a perfect lens. That's one of the criticisms of lenses. Yeah, but we don't make measurements on the side. Uh, let me be careful about that. If you're doing stadia distance measurements, you sometimes do it, but that's a low precision survey method. So if you're doing high precision survey method, you are always working at the center of the telescope itself. I still think that there's refraction in the center and over long distances, it's still gonna give you an effect. It's measured to be not there. There is refraction in the air. No, it's not measured to not, to, to not be there. That's not, otherwise, why would Robotham say that everybody's got to consider it and adjust for it? Because he had an agenda and he was wrong? Well, in your opinion, he might be. Having, I'm, I'm not bothered about that he had an agenda, but it's whether or not he's wrong or not. And, we, and he said that there was a demo, demonstration. Hang on. He said that there's a demonstration that you can actually do to prove that he's right. I'm going to say, go and prove it wrong and show that the thing that he itemized in that document is actually wrong. Because I don't have the equipment, but you do. And he, you could show him that he's, you could show everything. I actually don't have the equipment. I would have to get Jesse or uh, one of the others to go do it. Right. Well, you said you said, were I'm retired. I don't do that anymore. I said I was retired. Anymore. Oh, so you can deliver physical proof? That's a genius cover, dude. Genius. No, but I can you're get others to do it. Fake. Yeah, yeah, I think you're a fake. Fuck. I think you're yeah. a fake. I think when we go back and check the information, I think we'll find out that you actually did have somebody feeding you. Sorry, Paul. I think you're full of shit. Yep. He was just good try. Good try. That little Great try with a voice changer. I'm sure we're going to see you back later. A voice changer. Right. You don't want me back on again, okay? I don't yes, mind. Please come back. back. It's just, I think when we go back and look at the information, we'll be able to expose you for the liar that you. I think that you are. So go for it, guys. I've got nothing to hide on that. Well. Maybe we can get that information immediately, Nathan. Are you able to like recover the information straight away and check? No, it'll be it'll be rebroadcast at about four in the morning for UK people. That's fine. I'll tell you the technology I'm using is a laptop, right? With a blue snowball microphone, headphones, and I use voice meter just to balance out the volumes. Very muffled. To, to be honest, I've stopped listening. If I'm honest, Paul, because until I want to, until I find out whether or not you were being fed, I'm not listening. That's why I started playing my game. Which version of voice meter have you got? Uh, I don't know. Why I would know. you have voice meter if you're just a bloke? I know. He pretends he doesn't have screen share, but he's got voice meter. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> uh, I tell you exactly why I got voice meter is because I do recordings of videos for my business, training videos. For our systems, uh, version 1.0.6.1. Did 
do training videos. Why is your micro? Why? Why? Okay. I can't tell you that. You sound I can't tell you that. You sound paranoid. I sound paranoid. No, no, no. These guys, they sound paranoid. Yeah, this guy. We know what we heard, Al. Are you going to say that you didn't hear it conveniently? It sounded like an echo to me. I've got a recording. I'll give it you. Well, I don't mind waiting for Nathan's, but it would be great if you could check your recording because I'd like to know send whether... Me a, send me a Google Drive. I'll send it you. Yeah, an echo comes after you speak. This echo came before he spoke. And then he repeated his the words. The issue is, is the sound that we heard a repetition of what he then says? That's the issue. I think it was. I've got no reason to disbelieve him. The, Al, did you say you think it was? Yes. So then he's being fed. But it could have been from somebody else's channel. I wasn't paying that much attention. But I'm more than willing to give you the recording. I mean, here it is. Does it sound like me? In which case, it's just an echo. No, it spoke. The echo, the noise was before you spoke. You don't, you don't have an echo before you speak. Unless it says that we have had problems on the uh, the hangout where I've dropped out a few times, so have some others. I don't know if the IP is. Um... <laughs> Listen, Paul. My position is that until we get the facts established whether or not you were being sneaky, then I'm not really interested in anything you've got to say. If I'm honest, I'm just being honest, mate. That's fine. Well, you, it's up to you what you want to believe. I wasn't being fed. Well, it's not It's not what I want to believe. It's what we can prove, and I think that we'll be able to demonstrate that you were being fed in some way. So let's wait until tomorrow and see where the, where the land lies on it. And with that, I'm going to say a massive, huge, enormous thank you to everybody who's watched on the second channel, which is Nathan Oakley. If you are watching this on the second channel and you don't realise, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with all the Flat Earth debate after show, pre-show goodness. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!